What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now in this video I am going to build a workbench for my new lathe. I've done an unboxing and a first impressions of this lathe. I'll leave a link up here if you want to check that out. But we're going to build essentially my main workbench, a smaller version of this main workbench. So if you're looking to build yourself a woodworking bench, this is a great option. It's just made from 4x2s or 2x4s, however you want to say it. And uh, it's a laminated construction, a little bit of joinery in it, and you get an unbelievably strong, stable workbench that you can beat the hell out of. That will last you for years. And the best thing about it is it's extremely inexpensive to make. I think it was 100 euros worth of timber went into the main bench here. So it's going to be half that for this little tool, uh, this little bench we're going to make. It's going to be a four foot by two foot, roughly, so 1200 by 600 and it's just all laminating these 4x2s. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick out my best 4x2s that I have here. I'm going to keep the sides with the least amount of knots in it upright and we're going to laminate them together like this. So I'll pick that out, I'll cut the top to size and we'll get ready for glue up. Let's do it. Right, there we go. There's five boards with the least amount of knots in it. Pine is always full of knots, so you can do the best you can. You can actually buy this prepared if you want to spend a little bit more money. There'll be a little less work involved and you'll have a nice flat top. But you will get a nice flat top by doing it like this. So these are eight foot lengths. We're going to cut them exactly in half at four foot. It's 2,400 mil, so we're going to cut them at 1,200. And these five boards will become 10 boards. So our initial laminate will be 10 boards. Then we will add our aprons, which will make it 12 boards wide. That will all become very clear now when I go to assemble it. So we have a lot of laminating and gluing up to do. So we have to laminate the top, we have to laminate the two aprons, and we have to laminate all the legs. So first thing I'm gonna do, cut all these at 1200, and we get ready to glue them up. Let's do it. Okay, there is our initial um, 10 boards, two, four, six, eight, 10. That's gonna make up our laminate top. And like I say, it will be 12 board wide when we, when we put on the aprons. But I'll show you all that now in a second. So we're just gonna glue this up. It's nice and simple. I just have a straight edge on one side just to keep all these ends aligned. And we can trim this, we can flush cut any discrepancies we end up with after gluing. Um, I'm on the floor because it's nice and flat. And uh, I have plenty of space here. Nothing is rocking. Swept all the debris out of the way, so everything is nice and flat. So it's just a case of glue this up. You don't have to be too particular. Keep everything as flat as you possibly can. We will be planing the top of this when we assemble the bench. So uh, yeah, just lash on the glue and clamp it down. It's very simple. Okay, that is our laminated top all glued up, ready to go. So well, I'm gonna let that dry now for a good few hours. I might even leave it overnight um, just because I want a good solid top. And next I'm gonna glue the legs. Now, obviously the more clamps you have, the quicker you can assemble this table. But um, it's gonna to have to be done in sections if you only have small clamps. So you glue your, you glue your laminate top, you glue your legs, and then you glue your aprons. And I have only enough clamps to do the top and the legs. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I glue my aprons last so the legs are essentially just going to be two two by fours or four by twos together essentially making a four by four leg so nice and simple just glue these two faces together clamp them all up and that will make up our four legs now i'll go through all the measurements and everything for this table when i'm assembling it and i'll show you how i got the measurements you will be building your bench to suit your height and yourself and where you want your lathe or your tools or whatever you want and um, whatever height to suit you so yeah it's gonna be the same process. You don't have to watch me do it. I don't wanna bore you to death by watching me glue everything up. I'm essentially just gonna glue these together, and clamp them, stand them on the floor so I know that they're good and flat. And uh, I'll do two legs together at a time. So gluing between these two pieces and gluing between these two pieces. I'm just gonna clamp them together. There's nothing more to it than that. So when everything is glued up, I shall get back to you. Okay guys, it is now day two. I've left everything overnight to, for the glue to set up. It's very cold this time of year, so it's taken a lot longer for the glue to set, so I left it overnight. Um, so our top, our laminate top is good to go. That's all glued up, and our four legs are now glued up as well. So the next thing I wanna do is make the frames. 
So I've been to the bandsaw and I've cut out my tenon pieces. So we're going to have a bridle joint on top and we're going to have a mortise and tenon on the bottom like this. Now, if you are intending on building this workbench here, you will have to go with two mortise and tenons. So you have to keep your top piece down a bit and this one here. And the simple reason is if you want an end voice similar to what I have on this bench, you will have to allow for your voice mechanism, which is pretty long. And if you put a bridle joint on top, your voice mechanism will have to go through that and it'll destroy the strength of your frame. So you just keep that down and it'll be four mortises and tenons you will make in your frame and your voice will sit straight through there, if that makes sense. So that's if you're building this workbench. I won't be having any voices or anything on this for my laid bench. So it's going to be a bridle joint on top and a mortise and tenon down here. So I have to make up this frame now. So I'm going to cut my bridle joints on my bandsaw and then I have to knock through my um, mortises with a chisel. I might drill it out on the pillar drill. I'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's the next step. So everything is glued up now. We need to make our frames. We'll set up our top on top of our frames then. Then we can get our measurements for our aprons. And we have to recess the frames into our aprons, which is this guy here. And that's what gives this whole bench its strength. And I'll show you all that when we're doing it and it all makes sense. So let's rock on now and make this frame. Okay, there's all our bridle joints and our mortises marked out now. And as always, Mark your mortise, the width of the chisel that you're going to be using. So keeping the maximum strength you can in the material, just match the chisel to that, cut your tenons the same width as the chisel and mark your mortises also the same width as your chisel and the same for your bridle joints. So uh, yeah, that's just the chisel you're going to be using. I will knock these through with a chisel. Um, a standard bevel edge chisel will go through this just as handy as a mortise chisel, but if you have a mortise chisel, they are slightly better for doing this. So I'll try and drill some out on the pillar drill and then I'll show you how to knock one through with a chisel. It's pretty simple and going through point is pretty fast. It doesn't take very long. So I'm gonna cut these um, bridal joints out on the bandsaw now, and then we can address our mortises. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to knock out our bridles. There's not much to this. Just take your chisel and bang it out. I've ran an extra cut down the center on the bandsaw just to make um, removal of the material easier. And uh, yeah, there's not much to this. Just take your chisel and bang it out. You'll be through pretty quickly. The point is soft enough. Good sharp chisel and that material will be out of there pretty fast. Just work your way halfway in then turn it around and work from the other side. Just getting back to our shoulder line then we take smaller and smaller bites and start working perpendicular to the workpiece. to get a nice clean cut on our shoulder. There we go. Then it's just a case of flip it around and work from the other side. So I'm just adjusting my tenons. They're a little bit on the thick side and I don't want to beat them in. Um, they should just be a snug compression fit and slip in nicely when you glue them up. You don't want to beat these things in and risk splitting any of your joints and ruining all your hard work. So um, I don't have a shoulder plane, so I'm just using my low angle jack plane just to take them down a, couple, a mil or half a mil even either side. So we just want to remove some material Just a small amount, 
test fit. And obviously my plane blade can't get into my shoulder line here. So just take a chisel. And we can work that area in here just with the chisel. And then we don't need a shoulder plane. So again, it's only the smallest bit we're taking off. And then we can just test fit and make sure everything is nice and snug. So there we go, that's a nice tight fit. You should just be able to force it down, tap it down with your mallet. You don't want to beat it in because you can risk splitting the joint and undoing all your work. And as you're fitting all your joints, make sure you number them so you know which one is, goes on which side because they all might have slight little discrepancies with them. They're not going to be all 100% the exact same. So mark your joints, fit each one to each one and just number them one, two, three, and four. That's what I always do. I find it very handy. So now I'm just going to clean up my shoulder lines, make sure these all fit nice and tight, and then we can work on our mortises. Okay, now we're on to knocking out our mortises. And we'll get through this pretty quick. You can use, like I say, a bevel edge chisel, but if you have a mortise chisel, that would be better. But um, there's no reason why you can't use these. They do the job, and it's very, very simple. So we're going to start with our first cut. So we're going to line it right up on our shoulder line. Make sure we have our chisel lined up between our two lines of our mortise. And we're going to just take a perpendicular hit right there. That's it. And then we're just going to move forward. that a bit better. And just keep taking cuts and you'll notice the chisel will keep getting deeper with each successive one. And I'm already halfway through the top two by four or four by two. And when we reach the other side, just turn our chisel around. And just work back to that other shoulder line. Get nice and perpendicular on that. Take our cut. It is that simple. And then you just start the procedure all over again. So start from this side, perpendicular. Leave her out and keep taking cuts again. And just work your way over and back till you get probably two thirds of the way through. It'll happen pretty quick. And then turn it over, flip it around and do it from the other side and just line up your two holes. It is that simple. So I'll continue on with this now. Um, and I'll cut out all these marks. So remember, take your first cut, keep your chisel nice and perpendicular, knock it down. With each successive cut, you'll be getting deeper. Lever against your waist so you don't damage your shoulder lines. Flip your chisel around when you reach this end. Take another perpendicular cut. And just work, keep working the procedure. And it'll get, keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper you go. I'm already halfway through this. Just with one pass from side to side. And uh, like I say, it'll happen pretty quick. So I'll rock on with this now. Right, we have all our joints knocked out. Everything is good to go, I've tested everything. So I'm just in the middle of gluing it all up here now. So I've numbered all my joints so I know exactly where they go at together. So they're all kind of custom fit to each other if that makes sense. So um, yeah, it's always a good idea just to number your joints. And so it's just a case of glue this thing up now. So number three, let's see, one, two, and three. So that is my bridal joint for there. It's a good fit. We'll just get the glue on this. The glue 
was a little bit on the thick side because it's so cold. Let's make sure we get plenty of it in. That's seated nicely there. So I get the rest of these joints geared together and then I get a clamp on them. And I'll show you that when I'm done. Okay, there we go. That's our two leg frames ready to go. So I'll let that glue set up for a bit there. Now those joints are good and tight, so I'm not going to leave it overnight for the glue to set up because the joints are good and strong as they are. And once that glue starts to bind, I can start working with these. It's not going to um, affect. It's not like the laminate top where you need to leave that set because it could delaminate on you and that would be a bad thing. But because these joints are so snug, once the glue starts to set up, you can start working. So as soon as that glue is set up now, I'm, we're going to start making the aprons. And I'll show you how to take the measurements for your aprons and stuff and how this bench all goes together. I haven't um, talked about measurements much because you're going to build this bench if you so choose to build it to suit your height and your exact length, your workshop, whatever you want to go with. But um, I'll show you an important measurement now and how we determine the width, this width here, which I haven't explained yet. But that will all become very clear now. So yeah. Let that set up and we get on with the aprons. Right guys, I am back on the floor once more because it makes a great place to glue stuff up and keep everything flat. So we're making the aprons, which is this part of the workbench. Now this is the final piece of lamination that we need to do. So this is the final glue up. And this is something again I want to leave overnight to let this glue set up properly because I don't want these to delaminate. Even though we will be bolting this to our leg frames when we go to assemble, we'll be recessing these frames into our um, aprons and that's what gives us the strength that's what um, locks these two leg frames together is the aprons so it's our final piece of lamination and uh, like I say I want to let this glue set up overnight so it's just the it's end to end these are going to be going together so you're going to be laminating them like this so we've two lots to do and it's the full length of the workbench so we cut these pieces the same length as our top so yeah just that's very straightforward again we're using construction timber so these aren't really great jointable edges they're pretty flat in places but some of them might be a little bit thinner on one end than the other end so just line them up and get the best edges you can if you buy prepared timber you'll pay a little bit extra for it but you'll have more jointable edges i'm not planing this down it's just it's a workbench it's construction timber so i will clamp this together it'll set up and it'll be bolted onto the legs anyway so i'm not looking for perfect jointable edges just good clampable edges that will give me a good glue up so yeah enough talking now let's get this clamped up it's just a case of gluing it you've seen me do this 100 times before glue and clamp keep everything nice and straight and square when you're done and you should be good to go so let's get on it Okay, everything now is all glued up. I have both the aprons over here ready to go. So this is how you want to get your measurement for your leg frames. You want to let them sit proud of the top of your workbench, about 20 millimeters, so half the depth of your two by four. And what that's going to do is, it's going to help lock the legs together with the apron. So what I'm going to do is cut a dado or a trench either side into this apron. That will slot down onto the legs and then this top board will become part of my workbench as well. So there'll be an apron either side. And that's what locks both of these legs together across the way. It's what gives it all its strength. And it gives you a nice apron if you want to attach um, hole fasts. You want to drill a bunch of holes for hole and timber. And these are great benches for attaching leg um, voices to as well. So next thing I have to do now is channel out the width of my two by four 
into this through the bottom two pieces. I will stop at the top piece and that will sit on top of my leg, both sides. Then we can lock on our um, aprons, then we can set our top. So when you're making it, if you're making it like this workbench, allow for the width of your first laminate, your, hopefully you can see this on camera, your tool well and your second laminate. Let your leg frame then sit proud of all of that and allow for it to be recessed into your apron. When this all gets, starts to get assembled, you'll see exactly how it goes together and it'll make sense. So I'm gonna trench these two things now and then I'll get back to you. We are now on to final assembly. So I flush cut our, our tenons coming out, plane them back so they're nice and flat. Now you can leave the bottom ones protruding and have them as decorative tenons, like I did with my main workbench. I like a protruding tenon. I didn't leave enough on them this time to get a nice effect on them, so I just flushed them off. The top ones you will have to flush off because they sit behind your apron. So that's done now. Then we have two cross pieces to cut, exactly the width of our frame our leg frame, so that will sit from side to side. We will screw these down just like that. That will give this frame extra strength and it's also what our table sits on. So when you're measuring for your height, make sure allow for the length of your legs, the depth of your cross piece, and the thickness of your top. And that'll give you your final height of your table. And of course you will make that to suit your size or for whatever it is you're working on, whether it's a machine you're putting on, whether it's your main workbench, whatever. So legs, cross piece, thickness of your top, and allow all that for your final dimensions of your final height. So, I'm gonna screw these down now, and then we can get the aprons on, and you can see how this thing goes together. Let's do it. That's our two cross pieces on, so we'll mount our table top to that, or our workbench top to that. And here is our aprons. And like I say, these are what give this bench its strength. So this is how they work. snug and for our second apron There we go, and that's that thing. Already locked together and there's no screws or anything in it, and it's, uh, it's unbelievably stable. So yeah, you can kick the crap out of it, jump on it, do anything you want with it. That is a rock solid workbench just by clicking on those two aprons now. So let's get the top on. So you can see how the aprons work there. Both of our frames are inside them, and uh, we'll just drop the top in place now.
just like that. Now, if you're making my large workbench, which I'll go through all this when we're finished the video, the difference between them, you will want to glue your aprons. So you'll have your tool well in the middle, you'll be able to clamp between your tool well and your apron, glue on your apron. I'm not gonna glue on this because this is not gonna to take too much stress. It's for a machine, the machine will be sitting on it and it remains modular. The main workbench is also modular, but the apron comes off with that side of the top. I'll go through it all when we're finished, like I say, but um, I'm not going to glue these now. I'm going to coach both my aprons onto my frame, and I'm, uh, I am might coach both them onto my top as well. And so that remains completely modular. And before you screw or glue anything together, you might just have to rack your frame a bit just to adjust it to make sure that it's not skew and uh, that all the ends are lining up. So you can just give it a little bit of a tap just to make sure the legs aren't twisted and that's basically it so yeah let's get the coach bolts into it and we're almost home right i have my holes marked for my coach bolts Whoop. drop it on the floor so what i'm going to do first is just drill it with a forstner bit just to counter sink it just the depth of the bit itself that way i can get my socket into the top of the coach bolt and drive it in so when i want to disassemble the bench and it'll also be recessed, so you won't be catching on it. Then I'll drill a pilot hole. So first up, we have a 25 mil Forstner bit, or Frostner bit, however they pronounce it. Here we go. Next we can drill our pilot hole. we can drive them home. Now this thing is complete overkill, but uh, it's fun to use, so we're going to use it. There we go. As simple as that. And voila! We'll do the same on the other side now, and then the bench is almost assembled. We just need to flatten the top. Right, there we go. We are fully assembled. This thing is rock solid. It's a great construction for a workbench, and it's nice and cheap, and you get yourself one hell of a workbench out of it. So I'm just going to take this hand plane now, and I'm going to flatten the top. Again, you can save yourself a hell of a lot of trouble if you buy prepared timber. So you can buy prepared pine. You'll pay a little bit more for it. And um, then this construction 2x4 or 4x2, this all has rounded edges, so you can feel, you can hear that they are, you can feel the ridges between, um, between the boards, there is a gap there, and but you can flatten this down, that's why I said when you're selecting your timber, make sure and keep as much not free sides to the top as you can, so you can plane all this down. Now, when I built my original workbench, I hand planed every single board before I glued it up. I put a lot of work into it. Um, but this is just for my lead, so it doesn't have to be as pristine as my workbench. And I re had to re-flatten that workbench top a little while ago. Um, but yeah, they're great. So this is just going to be elbow grease and checking with a straight edge to make sure this is flat. And uh, yeah, there's not much to it. There we go, we are all finished up. It's top is good and flat. I've bolted the lead to it now, and it's good and solid. There's no movement, there's no budge, no vibration in it. So uh, yeah, this is a really solid workbench, and it's nice and cheap and easy to make. It's a little bit of fun making it. It's not too difficult. There's a couple of nice bit of joinery in it. And uh, yeah, unbelievably solid. It's a four inch thick worktop. So yeah, you know it's pretty solid. You could, if you wanted to, just put two little cuts on the side, just little 45s there and there, just a little decorative cuts if you wanted it to take the kind of very square look off it. But it's fantastically strong with this apron. It's a great bench to put a leg vise on, to clamp against your apron. You can also drill a series of holes in your apron as well for hole fasts, so you can lock a um, long piece of material to it, catch it with your leg vise. I'm gonna add a leg vise to that bench, so I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming video. So you can work long pieces of material, great. And it's, like I say, it's 50 euros worth of gear to build this and uh, yeah, you wouldn't go out and buy 
as solid um, a stand for your lathe and it's a it's good fun to make and pretty simple a couple of hand tools is always required and you get yourself a solid workbench so i'll take you through the differences now with my main workbench now let's have a look all right if this is the bench you intend to make just a couple of things to watch out for again as i explained in the video just get the width of your legs right so it will be wider than your laminates you will make your two laminates then you will make your apron your apron will sit into your legs so you reset your legs into your apron so get that measurement right so it's a laminate plus the tool well plus your laminate top and then your two aprons go on um, how i assemble this i glued the aprons to my top so get your legs down all made up get your aprons on get your laminate tops in and clamp them down so your tool well because it's a long bench you could put a series of coach bolts in it but I glued it and it has worked out just fine. Only other thing then, the difference between this one and this one, keep your tenons or your joints, your cross pieces down from your top. So mine are down a good bit more than they are over there, just to allow for your voice mechanism. That voice is pretty long, it comes back to about here, uh, the total mechanism. So just allow for that in your plans when you're making it. Other than that, it's pretty much identical, apart from the tool well, and the tool well is just two planks glued together, nice and simple. So it's allow for that total width and that measurement. I put a series of dog holes in my one, so I have, I can clamp nearly eight foot pieces to this bench if I want to. You put, just get a, get a voice with a dog in the end of it, and then you can just put your um, bench dogs all the way along, and you can clamp a nice long work piece work on and uh, yeah they're fantastic like i say they will take a leg voice as well i'm going to add a leg voice to either that side or that side of this bench so that will be an upcoming video and uh, yeah so there you go guys that's a two by four or four by two workbench it's unbelievably solid really cheap to make it's going to last you a lifetime hopefully and uh, this one has served me well over the last few years so hopefully this video has been informative and instructive and you got something out of it and uh, it might inspire you to go build your own workbench and uh, yeah that's it so give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed think about subscribing and uh, any comments and questions leave them below i will get back to you and i shall see you in the next one it's time for some beer let's do it